Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve balanced binary tree, lead code number 110. So we're given a binary tree and we need to determine if it is height balanced. And what that means is, well, a height balanced binary tree is a binary tree in which the depth of the two subtrees of every node never differs by more than one. Now that sounds kind of confusing, so let me show you an example. Okay, if we are given this tree, this actually is height balanced. So we'd want to return true for this. Now, if it is height balanced, it means that it's right height, which happens to be one here, and it's left height height, which is two, the difference between its two heights, two minus one, and we actually want the absolute value of that because we just care about the distance between those two things, that is equal to one. And so that is at most one. So as the definition said, as long as it's less than or equal to one, then that means it's good to go. Okay, but we need to check more than that. We're not just talking about the root here. We need to make sure it's balanced everywhere. So the root might be balanced, but there might be an issue elsewhere. Let's check the other nodes. Well, if we look at this node, well, its left height is one, its right height is also one. The difference between those things is just zero, and that is also less than or equal to one, so that is okay. If we were to look at any of these three nodes, well, all of their left and right heights are both zero, so all of those are going to be zeros. The difference between zero and zero is just zero, so all of those are balanced as well. So because all of these different nodes, all of the nodes in the tree are balanced, therefore the whole answer would be true. If we had a tree that looked like this, well now if we look at the root here, the root would have a right height of three and the left height would be four. So it's comparing four to three, the difference between that is just one. And so there's no problem in the root here. And there's actually no problem here either. That's comparing one to two, that would be fine. But there is a problem if you're talking about this tree. So if you're rooted in this tree right here, if you're rooted in this, well it's left height is one, it's right height is three, and so just just for this node here, the difference would be two, which again is bigger than one. And therefore, since there is a problem somewhere in the tree, there is a problem overall. And so our total answer would be false. So we'll assume that it's balanced through this global variable and we'll do our DFS here. And if we kind of ever find that, oh, here, there is actually an issue here. Well, we would change this to be false here. And so that way, once we kind of came back from our DFS and we were done our helper function, after we are escaping this, we could check if we're balanced or not. If we ever turn it to false, our total answer should be false because there was a problem somewhere. Otherwise, if there wasn't an issue, well, then it just should be true like it was before. And so we can just kind of return the value of this global. Okay, so let's actually just assume that we are balanced and you actually want this as the list of true. If you don't know why, I explained this thoroughly in the diameter of a binary tree video, uh, but in general, you would want this to be a list when you're talking about a global variable instead of like a local variable to the recursive function. Okay, then we're going to write a recursive helper function that's going to basically return the height of a tree. So it's going to return the height of a root. Now, if we don't have the root, well, then we want to return zero because a non-root shouldn't contain contribute to the height. Otherwise, we need to get the left height is equal to the height on the root dot left. And we also need to get the right height, which is equal to the height of the root dot right. And now we can immediately say, hey, if the absolute value of the left height minus the right height, if that is ever bigger than one, well, then that means there is a problem. And if there is a problem, we want to set our global. So you need to do balanced at zero is equal to false. So now that we've done this, if there was a problem anywhere, that means there is a problem overall and our complete function here, this function should return false. So we set that to be false and now there is always a problem. Now, if that is actually the case, we really don't care about the height of our function anymore. And so I'm just gonna return zero because if you've set the fact that there is an issue, well, then we know at some point we're going to end up returning false. And so we really don't care if our height thing is actually working at this point, it's already going to return false. So we'll just return the value of zero in that case. Now, otherwise, if we haven't ran into an issue, well, then we just want our function to return the height. The height of our current node is going to be one plus the max of the left height and the right height, okay? So this function is called height because it's returning the height of a root. That way you can get the left height and the right height and you can measure to see if our current node is balanced. If it's not balanced, we ran into a global issue here and so we set that. Otherwise, we just want this function to return the height so that maybe somewhere else in the tree you could find if there's an issue. Okay, so from there, we just want to call height on the original root that we were given, and then we want to return our global, so balanced at zero. 
Okay, now there's actually a slight optimization that we could do here. Now notice that if we do call this on the root, well, it's going to go down left here and it's gonna do a DFS going all the way left. Now you could find an issue anywhere in the left there. If you ever found an issue in the left, if at this point, if just after we've gone down the left, well, if we know that the balanced at zero is false. So if that is actually false, well, we know we want to return false and we just want to escape here. And so we will actually just return again we'll say the bogus value of zero because we're saying if you found a problem in the left we just want to get out of here as fast as possible and not go down to the right because an issue's already been found Okay, so the time and space complexity of this solution. Well, the time complexity is just gonna be big O of N here because we are visiting every single node in the tree and we are doing constant work here. Okay, all of these nodes here, we're not really doing anything crazy per node. And so it's just gonna be O of N because we visit all the nodes. And the space complexity, this is ultimately a depth first search. And because it's a DFS that is going to use basically vertical call stack space as we go down and down, that is going to keep the call stack open and so that is going to be big o of h where h is the height of the tree i hope this was helpful guys drop a like if it was and have a great day bye bye